Good evening, everyone. And uh, it is my pleasure to host you on this webinar by Upgrad Abroad on the topic of DBA versus a PhD in technology. So my name is Rakhi Talukdar and uh, I'm a senior associate at Upgrad Abroad. Now, speaking of the topics to begin with, of all the questions uh, that we often receive from learners who are seeking a postgraduate degree in business or a doctorate degree in business, the one focusing on the differences between a DBA, which is a doctorate of business administration, and a PhD in business administration is the most prevalent. Now, when we speak of a DBA, uh, of course, it's become increasingly prevalent towards uh, all over the world now. And uh, speaking of its history, uh, it started in the year 1953, but by 1960, uh, at Harvard Business School, where it was started, it also became the de facto, uh, de facto business doctorate. However, in many quarters, uh, it is still a little understood. And uh, among students, there's always this uh, perpetual conundrum about which degree should they go for. Today, we are honored to have with us uh, to speak on this topic, Dr. Dakshinamurthy V. Koluru who is the provost at Upgrad Institutes and is also a distinguished faculty at Golden Gate University, California. Dr. Murthy also happens to be the co-founder at Insofe, which is an applied engineering school and it's currently India's top data science institute, which has courses with a focus of data science, big data analytics, so on and so forth. Dr. Murthy in his capacity uh, has several accomplishments to his credit, and uh, he has been very actively involved in advising and building top-notch institutes uh, like Atlas Skill Tech University, Golden Gate University, uh, which are providing career-relevant education. So Dr. Muthi, it's a pleasure to have you amongst us. And thank you for thank taking you. the time out to address us today. And uh, without any further ado, I would hand it over to you to speak more about the program. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? To start yes. with, yeah, great. Right. Um, thanks a lot, Rakhi, and I welcome um, all the interested candidates. So today I will be primarily talking about this doctorate of business administration in emerging technologies, but I will address the questions that Rakhi has brought out. Um, what is special about uh, PH this program compared to other DBAs? and in general DBA versus PhD. And I will also give all the information that you need to take the right decision in this, um, uh, at this juncture. Okay. Um, so we, the, here you will see two brands, UGDX and Golden Gate University. So UGDX is the set of technology schools that we are establishing in another ways, full-fledged university. There are these universities that have been focusing on liberal arts education, humanities education. But nowadays, with the advent of AI machine learning, it's impossible for a university to exist without a technical school. So we establish, we have chosen certain locations and we're establishing globally these technical schools within the university. And our goal is to become world's largest technical school with 10 to 15 locations across the world. Currently, we are present in three, adding three more in the next, um, um, uh, next six months, five more in the next three, six months. Our U.S. presence is in San Francisco. We are adding in U.S. Um, five more locations and in U.K. a few more. We are 70 plus faculty members with around 75 plus patents, 300 research publications. We have DBAs, we have PhDs. We have been doing it and that's what we will be uh, discussing today. Okay, And I am particularly... Uh, involved in this uh, design of the specific DBA program. I uh, went to school at Carnegie Mellon University, did my PhD there, and then I have been in education. And I have designed, this is the second DBA program that I designed. I did one with a French university called Rennes School of Business. Uh, very successful uh, doctoral program. Now this is the second one, DBA in emerging technologies. So, um, 
the school as such is helped by some really uh, strong leadership team. Dr. Pramod Sinha, um, who you see here, um, is uh, the founding dean of Indian School of Business, one of the top 20 B schools in the world. And uh, Ms. Shankur Dhawan is the president of this entire study abroad activity in Upgrad. Uh, I introduced myself. I am the provost of all these mm, 10, 15 institutes that we are establishing, of which Golden Gate is our first US presence. <clears throat> Dr. Sridhar Pappu is uh, mm, uh, the delivery head. He handles the entire teaching. Dr. Venkatesh Shunkad is the Dean of GGU Institute of Technology, the specific department that is offering this course. Today, I will be doing most of the discussion, but I wanted to show this slide to give you an understanding that this program is actually designed, handled by top-notch academicians globally. Just to give you an idea, um, Dr. Pramod Sinha is a PhD from University of Pennsylvania and Ivy League University. I'm a PhD from Carnegie Mellon University, which is one of the first places in the world to invent artificial intelligence. of Texas at El Paso. Dr. Venkatesh Shunkad is a PhD from Colorado State University. So, um, uh, and Ankur is a uh, MBA from Indian Institute of uh, Management, Bangalore. So, um, very strong management and uh, technology backgrounds. But that is enough about us and the Institute. Now, let me start discussing about the program itself. See, the DBS originally were designed by B schools with a goal to help a business employee, someone who has spent 20, 25 years in business, if they want to retire into a teaching profession. Asking them to come to P, do a PhD full time is a very difficult thing. So they created this program where it combines their work experience and gives them the right teaching experience. So, because they are turned into teachers or professors, the emphasis was a lot more on the coursework. And um, a thesis committee um, will be there to approve the thesis defense. While they say publications are preferred, but they are not mandatory. Primarily, experiential learning is to get into an academic B school to teach. But we are start, we started this DBA with a completely different vision. 88% of AI projects, even today in the industry, are failing. And companies are failing to transform the proof of concepts they build into proper final services and products. In most of these cases, the reason for failure is not the technology, not coding, not mathematics, not technologies. It is the business leaders who are lacking the fundamental understanding of how to conceptualize, design, and build the AI projects. This DBA is designed to bridge that gap. So this DBA is designed to take a working professional and transform him into a ML manager who can work with the tech teams and who actually is a technologist himself or herself so that they can actually execute these projects. Similarly, very few companies in the world are able to do sufficient research to build intellectual property of their own in AI. If you saw today, um, OpenAI head Sam Walton made a very bold statement. He said, mm, it will be very difficult for Indian companies to build their own IP in AI, is what he said. Of course, Indian CEOs took it very aggressively and they, they said, we are accepting your challenge and we'll build um, uh, new uh, IP. But if you take out the uh, arrogant part of it, what he says is, it is not natural um, for people to know how to build IP in a company. It needs a specific skill. And this DBA is designed to provide that leadership to a corporate. So this DBA is for people who already have a profession, 
but want to transform into a leader okay in ai and machine learning emerging technologies with specific focus on ai and machine learning hopefully this point is very clear this is not for someone who wants to become a faculty but you can of course become a faculty and there are advantages of that i will explain but the main goal is not becoming a faculty the main goal is getting into an industry okay and in us and i'll explain how and now one broad question the difference between dba and phd see i did my phd then i designed this dba when i was choosing my problem in my phd nobody cared about um where it will be used in fact it was not even important many phds you can do a phd about what happened in the 28th nanosecond after the big bang will it be useful anywhere maybe maybe not but phd the goal is to pick a problem that is complex enough mathematically that requires several scientific techniques to solve it and quenches some curiosity whereas in dba people don't accept such thesis topics you must have your problem must have some connect with the industry okay it should be related some industry retail de, you, you, industry procurement department whatever industry whatever department but they should be able to uh, it it should be solvable no it is not something where you spend 3 years to solve it in 6 months to 9 months you should have a solution secondly work experience dba cannot accept candidates without any work experience minimum in fact our dba requires a minimum of 5 years of experience whereas a phd i went right after my btech so there's no need to do um have any work experience in if you are doing a dba it is 3 years part time if you do completely part time here in our dba you do first year part time and second year full time so you will complete your dba in roughly 2 years 2.4 uh, 2 year 4 months whereas a phd takes much longer 4 and a half to 5 years in most dba programs as long as your com committee approves your thesis you are good publications are not important because it's designed for industry whereas in phd a minimum of two publications or three publications depending on the quality of the institute they said that now most importantly the outcome of a dba is a leadership role in industry outcome of a phd is you will become an assistant professor in a university or you will also apply for a scientist position in a research lab like google lab or ms microsoft lab right so uh, this program is a dba in emerging technology because it is technology driven dba you are aiming to become a senior lead in an industry with tech role so where you are a technologist hands on technologist please note that this program makes you a hands on technologist okay in addition to making you a leader okay that's uh, that is the difference between dba and phd hopefully now it is very clear to you what is the difference between regular dba and this dba in emerging technology and how is this dba in emerging technology different from a regular phd if there are more questions about it i will address them towards the end please type them in the chat room or q and a room okay now this is a very important slide and i am going to spend probably 5 to 10 minutes just going through this slide okay i want to talk about the overall benefits of this program in this slide and the next slide i am talking about our dba with emerging technologies so in a regular masters dba phd the duration in us is 1.5 to 4 years study duration this is what means you can't work you have to study in our case you study one year in us that's it you spend eight months year part time and then you go there study for one year and then you will spend two more terms but those two terms you will actually work full time so you actually earn so your study time is only one year 
in a regular master's program, you study for 18 months in a DBA program. I don't know too many DBAs that are full-time like ours. So let me take a master's example or a PhD example. You study for 18 months to four years. Then you will get three months time during your OPT to find a job. If you don't find a job, you have to come back to India. So most graduates actually apply to consultants saying, take me for free. I don't care. Just get me for free. Don't pay me anything because all I need is a job. Whereas in our DBA program, as I told you, you will get two terms during your education to find work. That is nine months. Plus, you will get three months. So you have 12 months time to find a job. You are not in a hurry to find a job somehow. So you get the, so you will, you can find a good internship or a job, get paid for that. This is a huge advantage that our program offers. You will have two terms as a student and an addition of three months to find a position. Now, what that means is in the regular program, you have you have you get one year OPT. Of course, you have to find a job in three months, but one year and then two years you can extend it provided you have a job. Whereas in our program, during the student phase, you will get two terms. That's actually nine months, not eight months. And then you will get three years. So you more or less have one extra year 3.9 years without an H1, you can actually work and earn full money. This is another major advantage. Now, a typical DBA in US costs between 60 to 75,000 US dollars, whereas our program in the pathway model costs 22,500 US dollars. If you want to study the whole program in US, you can save one term. And however, you will spend $2,000 in tuition and some more money in stay. So you can do it as a pathway, eight months in India and uh, um, then uh, full-time one year in US. Or you can do full-time where uh, um, you spend uh, complete two years in US. So when you, if you do two years in US, you will spend $2,000 more for this uh, tuition and some extra money for accommodation and stay. So before you are eligible to work that uh, in you in a regular master's program, assuming you spend around $800 or $900, $800, you spend 18 months before you earn any money. Assuming that right after master's, you get a job, you spend 18 months, 18 months, $800, you, your tuition, your accommodation and your living expenses are $14,400. Whereas here, as I said, you at most spend um, one year, 12 months times eight, $9,600. And then you will find a job. And in our case, GRE is waived. And the first eight months when you are in India, in a usual thing, you go directly to US. So you, you, have, to work, you have to study, you can't work. Whereas here, first eight months when you are studying in India, it's a completely self-paced program. So you can work while studying. I'll show you in a slide, in, a, in one of the future slides, how exactly the whole thing works. But during the eight months in India, you um, work and you get the education. Then you go there, spend one year classes. And then you, again, as a student work for two terms, complete your CPT, then you get three years of OPT. So three year, nine months, you will actually get your OPT. I'll show you in a different slide. Now, another interesting advantage. I did some little bit of math here. Um, see, after your three years, how do you get your uh, H1? What are the chances? Typically, if you apply for an H1, the ch chance of success is around 30%. So you get, uh, let's say, once you have an OPT after a BTEC degree, you tried three times. What are the chances that you failed all three times, 70% first time, then 70% second time, 70%. What is the chance that all three years you will fail? If you remember probability, if you don't, we will teach it in the course anyway. It is 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.7, roughly 35%. On a regular H1, your probability that all three years you will fail is 35%. 
Whereas if you have a graduate degree, like a DBA or a master's, your chance of H1 is 50%. So what are the chances that you will miss your H1 for three years during your OPT? 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, which is roughly 12.5%. So if you do your regular master's or regular DBA or, or DBA emerging technologies, three, you get three years to apply for your H1. Okay, these three years, what is the chance that at the end of three years, you failed all three attempts to get an H1, so you have to come back to India. That is 12.5%. So there is a 87.5% that you will get your H1. So there is a very high chance that you will get your H1, but there is still a 12.5%. On the other hand, if you, after your DBA, after working in industry for two to three years, if you want to take a academic position, the academic positions have near 100% certainty of H1, okay? So if you do your DBA well, and if you get into an academic position, the chance that you don't get H1 is 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1, so it's 0.1%. So there is a 99.99% chance that you will get your H1. So I'm not saying you should aim for a um, uh, academic job. But all I am saying is BBA gives you more options. You can go for an industry job. And if let's say first year you fail in getting the H1, you always have the option with a doctoral degree to join a faculty position and get your H1. Continue as a faculty for two to three years, get your green card. And even that is fast tracked as a faculty and you can get back to industry. So it DBA just gives you those nice options for you to switch between academia and industry, depending on your uh, uh, on your visa, this thing. Our DBA in particular helps you get in both academia and industry. Any DBA helps you in academia. Our DBA helps you get in academia and industry. So you can play it really well. Okay. So... Hopefully now you understand the advantages of this DBA, our DBA program. You spend less, a lot less, okay? Less than half. You get one extra year of um, before H1 uh, status. And first year you are working here and you're, you have multiple options to maximize your H1 chances, okay? So really, this is a very unique and a wonderful program. Now, let me explain to you how the course flows. You once you get selected, admitted after your application process, you spend two terms in India, okay? And for that, you get nine credits and a certificate from IIIT Bangalore. And during these eight to nine months, you show financial proofs and you get your I-20 and you apply for your visa and get your student visa. F1 visa, and you go to San Francisco. There in San Francisco, roughly 12 months or three terms, you do your coursework. So you earn around 27 credits of which 21 credits are courses, six credits are capstone. So 36 credits are over. Now you have two more terms on a student visa, okay, to work. This is called CPT. During this CPT, you actually can work full time these two terms, earn full as much as the company pays. This is legal. For two terms, nine months, you can work full time in US anywhere in the US. Okay. And we will support you with career enhancement. Okay. We'll support you with that. And once you complete those two terms, your degree, you will get a doctoral degree and your OPT kicks in then. Then you will have another three more years, one year and that gets extended to two more years. And you know what? Because you have a doctoral degree at this point, you can apply for a faculty position or you can apply for an industry position. If you get, if normally what you could do is you do the industry position, work in an industry. After a year, if you are having problems with your H1, switch to academia and get your H1, work in academia for a couple of years, and then move back to industry. So that is uh, how the system can work. So two terms in US, which is self-paced, so you're continuing to work. And 
then you go to us spend one year in the classroom then as a student you will have two more terms where you get your academic um uh, degrees you, you know you 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 are a student visa but you work full time you earn money also for which we will provide the career support once you get the degree you will get your opt hopefully that uh, these three slides explain to you how the process works and the curriculum as such this is a fairly intensive machine learning ai generative ai curriculum this is a very advantageous thing i want you to know starting from the very basics in statistics we take you all the way to generative ai you study in india the triple it b curriculum and then in golden gate university we have designed a phenomenally good curriculum to teach you all these uh, advanced data engineering um, programming machine learning deep learning generative ai you will learn the state of the art things and golden gate university is in the downtown of san francisco across the street you have salesforce next to it linkedin behind it is microsoft google it is in the downtown it is in the hub of artificial intelligence and machine learning silicon valley hub of silicon valley so the beauty in golden gate is you can walk and find 100 companies around you that gets you um ai internship so if you study well it will be your career is assured so i want you to know this is an intensive program but if you study well the success is near uh, unlimited now we will only accept people with 5 plus years of experience into the dba program if you have less than 5 plus years you can join a similar curriculum but what you get is a masters degree in full stack ai and ml this dba program for this to be you to be eligible you should have a btech or a be or a m tech or a me degree msc is also fine sciences and then minimum of 5 years of work experience okay then you have to apply to the program and we we will evaluate and once you get admitted this is the process a bit about our institute golden gate university is 103 year old university it's in san francisco it it was having a prestigious law school and a business school we all programs are fully accredited by wasc wasc is the same body that accredited stanford berkeley or any university in the west coast has to be accredited and our programs are accredited including this one interestingly golden gate university is also a member of association of indian universities which means actually for some reason if you want to come back and um, work in an indian institute um, all the credentials are counted the technical school is established only this year okay and hence the if you ask me what is the rank of the technical school this we are not ranked yet because we are only a one year old institute technical school within the university you get the degree from the university university has a business school a law school and a technical school technical school is established recently of which i am a professor and i am representing but all our faculties are phd's as i said in the last 9 months itself we got five patents and 44 papers so very very um, intensive um, research industry driven um, faculty that will be teaching and uh, san francisco is in the west coast and these are the other locations where we are establishing ugdx anyway so i will pause here uh, rakhi if you want to uh, take it from here and Uh, how students ask me questions i'll be glad to answer sure sure dr murthy and firstly thank you so much for a very informative and insightful discussion on the dba program i think through the presentation uh, we've been able to get a very clear perspective about what is a dba uh, the similarities between a dba and phd and i think from the discussion i got uh, to understand that a dba is more like a double edged sword because whereas a phd really prepares you for a career in academia a dba leaves it open for you to choose academia uh, or uh, you know continue to work up the corporate ladder 
And that having been said, uh, the DBA that we are offering at GGU primarily focuses if you would like to move up the corporate ladder. Yes, yes. Very and, precisely put. Yes. And uh, I think our uh, audience does have a lot of questions around it. And uh, I would encourage all of you uh, to use the next half an hour to get all your questions answered. Uh, uh, Dr. Murthy is uh, here with us for the next half an hour. So please utilize this time. Uh, but apart from that, uh, Dr. Murthy, you know, uh, through this conversation, there were several questions that uh, even I uh, thought of, I think, which will be also helpful for our audience. Uh, so first and foremost, I wanted to understand uh, who is the right target audience for this program, uh, mm -hmm. because this is a DBA with a focus in technology, whereas a DBA is the highest professional doctorate degree in management. Now, this ideally would be open to people with who are coming with a five plus years of experience yes. in so, the field of management and also tech. So ideally, right. how would you choose? How would you say a learner makes this decision? So uh, actually, two of the participants, Mr. Sai Kiran Konda and yes. Mr. Nand Kishore, asked very yes. similar yes. questions. So, yes. see, this DBA program has quite a bit of technology focus. So, if you don't want technology, this is not the right program. We will also teach management enough to get you up the ladder, but we want you to become tech leaders. Okay, so is MCA with five plus years? Yes, of course, Sai Kiran, you are eligible. Now, Nand Kishore, you seem to have gotten there, almost there. So if your other aspects of your applications are, are strong, we will consider that. See, I have once taken one person with one year experience. So you may ask me, why have you broken your word? If I get a entrepreneur who started a company after BS, BTEC, and is successful and is a brilliant manager, I'll break all my rules to get the guy. So here, these are indications. Four years, seven months, particularly, you do have uh, almost five years. So if your rest of the application is good, we can consider. But I want all the participants to understand this. This is a technology program. So if you hate coding, please don't join this program. Okay, this is not a management program. It's a rigorous technology doctorate program. Okay, what about DBA program for PhD student? Uh, Allah has said, did you complete your PhD already or are you doing your PhD? I need to know that if you are doing your PhD. People by UGC to continue. Hello, my line is broken. I, no, you are audible now, Dr. Murthy. It broke okay. for a few seconds. Yeah. yeah. So you are not uh, eligible by UGC to continue with two full-time programs. So if you already did your PhD or if you are on a part-time PhD, it'll be very difficult to do two intensive programs like this, right? So I don't know, unless I know more about your other background, I can't answer. Kayur, fee, I clearly explained in another slide. Mm, it is... Uh, First eight months, you have to pay that four lakh rupee uh, for the eight, nine credits. And then once you go there, 18,000, $17,500. Uh, I put that uh, clearly there. Uh, and our teams can help you with the exact fee structure in one-on-one -on -one conversation. But the important aspect is it is half or one third of any DBA program and half of any master's program. So it's a very inexpensive thing. Right. Thank you, Dr. Murthy, for mm -hmm. answering those questions. Uh, another question, uh, you know, which came to my mind is, of course, somebody who's coming from a tech profile and considering that, like you mentioned, they want to be a leader in the field of technology. So mm -hmm. you uh, put this across that the, you need to have core computing skills. There are also tech professionals who already have an MBA. Mm -hmm. Um, would you say that, you know, a DBA should always be a follow-up to an MBA? <laughs> and, uh, my second line of thought would also be, uh, as per the eligibility criteria, five years is sufficient for you to uh, take admission. But uh, DBA, when it was created, ideally, it's it was created keeping in mind that, yes, after extensive years of experience, let's say 10, 15 years, you want an official acknowledgement. So right. how do uh, learners decide that when is the right time for me to take advantage of this rigorous curriculum? Sure. 
good questions but there are multiple questions here so i'll try to remember each one and ask uh, so the first one i don't think i said it if i said it i didn't mean it i never said you have to have coding knowledge i all i am saying is you have to have technology uh, interest so for example priya here wrote i did my masters in civil engineering i didn't complete it but i did my masters in civil engineering assume that priya didn't have any coding background she is still eligible the, this is a technology program right. we start from the very basics we start from the first line of python coding so you don't have to know coding but you need to have the tech mindset you 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 know if you did a bcom and then an mba i'll be very 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 about taking you but if you did a btech and an mba or if you did a btech and an mtech or just a btech you are all eligible so priya in your case i don't care if you completed your masters as long as your undergrad credentials are good btech civil engineering if it is good and you have 5 years we should be able to do that was the first question rakhi you asked the right. second one so btech and mba is is fine now why did we only go for 5 years experience this is a very good question yes. see the, the the challenge is we are creating here a tech leader so a tech leader should be hands on those who have 15 years experience in industry typically lose all the technology grip they become they move so higher up in management majority of them are doing excels who are then their assistants are doing excels and then the third level is what is doing technology so yeah. i needed to or we needed to have people who can get hands on but who have enough business understanding also so we felt for the technology leadership this 5 to 10 year is a sweet spot where they haven't gone away from technology but at the same time they are not young kids they can manage a team of 5 to 10 people or 20 people and so that's why for this techno managerial program we have chosen 5 to 10 years so who is it best for if you spent 5 years in some technical role it could be a civil engineering building construction technical role i don't have a problem with that but some technical role want to get into artificial intelligence machine learning and lead a team of 10 to 15 members and build a product or build a service or own a client etc this is the right degree to do absolutely uh, thank you dr murthy for putting it across so clearly i think one of the things that uh, why is it you have this criteria is you need to essentially have aptitude for it mm. it's a rigorous program it will give you outcomes that is certain but only mm. if you make the most of it uh, which yes. is what i gathered yes. also uh, speaking of career outcomes uh, dr murthy and uh, you know you have highlighted very nicely in your presentation that you are essentially at a very strategic location you are surrounded with the top tech companies and you are surrounded by companies where the latest innovations in ai ml so on and so forth is happening so just wanted to have a clear understanding of after doing this dba uh, what kind of positions may open up for our learners if they want to climb up the corporate ladder yes. very good question so uh, just one quick uh, question uh, in the chat room rakhi uh, yes. someone uh, guys by the way you can give your name you don't have to be anonymous mm -hmm. um uh, have, they wanted that uh, slide i yes. think i will share it with you you can share it with all the attendees i don't have okay. their emails here yeah. okay, so now yes. coming back to your important question so Uh, as an ai ml uh, with a doctoral degree i am assuming rakhi you didn't mean academic position that's very clear you can go to any b school or any tech school uh, right. and become a assistant professor associate professor etc right in industry there are two or three uh, positions that you should look for in a large organization uh, you can become a um depending on your experience you can become general manager technology to a vice president technology let's say if you have 10 years probably you can even push for a vice president in 5 years you can get a senior manager or a general manager in a technology role so uh, they will have let's say if it's a bank okay my fraud detection team i want you to lead or my um, customer retain uh, retention or customer uh, retain retainment using technology you will lead is the kind of roles that they will take then there are all these startups that have um, roles that require one is a pure 
technical product development you guys will be qualified to do that leader of product development team okay particularly if the startup has nowadays it's impossible for a startup to not have an ai component in their product so the other role is leader of that ai development division can be uh, taken up by you uh, and ml senior ml engineers senior ml managers this is a program where you can um, own a service or a product in a startup or in a large company now another major advantage is if you work let's say in a pharma industry it'll, these five years okay and now you do a dba you will be a hot cake in healthcare health tech services and pharma industry because you now are deep in technology and you understand the domain of pharma so well very rarely people are found with that skill so you will be taken so you can actually monetize the work experience that you had in these 5 years after the 2 years when you are searching for a job that's a very like an mba program in mba Uh, people with three years experience are and an MBA they get one salary. People with ten years and an MBA they get a higher salary. Like that in this DBA program, your previous experience coupled with in-depth knowledge of DBA and some management puts you at a manager or a general manager or a vice president position. Absolutely, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Murthy. And in fact, you've also answered my follow-up question. uh when you mention that uh the five years of experience or more years of experience if you have in india uh is not discounted for it is actually helpful in leveraging yourself to get hold of the positions like you've mentioned mm-hmm. in your tech role uh which is uh, was my next question that you know if the five years of experience how much value do us employers really uh place on that and uh, also having uh, you know asked that uh, a dba gives you a doctorate title and uh, you know you also have a doctorate degree you have a vast corporate experience so to what extent do you believe that a doctorate tag can help you climb the corporate ladder how you know, does this is a, this is a very philosophical question and yes. i have a powerful answer for that okay um, remember this guys irrespective of this session hmm. your degree doesn't help may or may not help you to grow okay degree doesn't help you to grow but see in life i raised quite a few times i fell down quite a few times a doctoral degree helped me from falling down doctoral degree's purpose is not necessarily going up you know i reported to Uh, people who probably are tenth graduates, if they are richer and have a company, you know that is a different problem. But when I made a mistake, mm-hmm. if I see the other guy without a doctoral degree, without a technical background, falling means the guy is out. Whereas company still said, "Hey, you know what? No, this guy can add value." So they they stop me. So doctoral degree stops you from falling down. Okay. okay? Yes. Thank you. I think uh, that was an example which I will definitely. Yeah. So, mm, yeah. The what was the other question? Uh, let there are a couple of questions here. Yes. Let me yes. see. Uh, Drishti, I think there is a much bigger confusion. I think she is in eleventh yes. grade or something. And so I it is not know. even. Uh, yes. this, Drishti's mm, question. M S C uh, physics. Mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Drishti's question, Doctor Kaluru. Uh, she has been, you know, asking this question for quite some time, and her question is that she is currently preparing for her JEE, and she has yes. plans that after doing her technical degree, which she intends to do in B Tech in computer science, she wants to uh, establish her own company. So I mentioned to her this could be perhaps helpful for you in the future. Yeah. Yes. so anyway for dba if you yeah. establish after your btech you have to spend five more years to get there otherwise you can do a masters of your after your bachelors let okay. me go to abhishek singh abhishek singh yes. um, my msc physics uh, that's fine distance it doesn't matter mba aviation pursuing mc oh my goodness uh, with 16 mm-hmm. years of experience in fact abhishek uh, this is 16 years of experience so this obviously from an experience point of view i don't have a problem but you really have to ask yourself with 16 years can you sit and 
do a technical course uh, i will i will give you a homework in mathematics can you actually make yourself do it if you think you are up for the challenge if you can spend one year in us like a grad student okay working hard i think you can take it right your experience is not the issue uh, your uh, uh, motivation and attitude towards taking a proper uh, technical education is what you need you are the best guy to answer it um <clears throat> then i am ready i understand um your work as i said is fine but you know can you now make yourself write python code <laughs> that's the question we will teach you how to write it do you have the patience to sit and do that <laughs> um manoj uh, no uh, mba from imt this particular dba mm -hmm. <laughs> emerging technologies where you spend one year here one year there we need a technical background so we only accept triple it bangalore certification <laughs> excuse me sure sure just give me a second yes sure yeah sorry about that please go ahead okay not an issue at all just to let our uh, audience know that we have the next we have 10 more minutes with dr kuluru so i encourage everyone once again please ask your questions i'm sure you have very specific questions related to which background you are coming from and you may also have questions around a dba in the us versus a phd in india so on and so forth please uh, you know do ask your questions uh, dr kuluru i you know since so much has been spoken about you know how a doctor at title really moves you up the corporate ladder you know what i understood from the discussion is it's not the tag that helps you move up the corporate ladder it's mostly the kind of exposure that you get and the kind of research work uh, that you deep dive into during your dba and here uh, one point of difference between a phd and dba is the research focus and you've covered that phd is more academically oriented whereas the dba is applied research now i really would like you to throw some light on how this research shapes you hmm. and uh, and gives you the critical skill sets because of why because of which people consider you for <clears throat> select level positions right not that because you have a doctorate but because of the kind of growth that you have and the other thing uh, i would like you to uh, speak on is that you know uh, in a dba program how do people uh, you know decide on what practical problem they want to work with uh, that essentially will open up avenues for you yes yeah. so yeah. again there are two questions let me yeah. try yeah. to remember and answer yeah. the first one so let's talk about applied versus uh, uh, fundamental research yes yeah. my phd topic uh, let me actually tell you my phd topic i spent 5 years on a block of material this big just my palm i could fit 5 years on that my primary analysis was within at an atomic level um there are some places where their atoms are not properly connected to each other there is some disturbance so i was studying if i leave an atom at one end will it go through that disturbed region or will it circumvent and go around that disturbed region five years i studied it now who cares at some level right yes okay yes. but yes. but during the process i learned a lot of technical skills like how to do electron microscopy how to test materials for their strength at 1000 degrees centigrade in vacuum how to do mathematics of some cool orders so the goal of a phd thesis is not about taking up a problem that someone cares about it is about taking up a problem that gives you makes you an expert of something now if someone comes from the dba and he says i will actually try to figure out uh, something like what i said i said no way your thesis is not accepted move back what i want someone to come back and tell me is look currently there are 20000 people every day suffering from breast cancer whatever you know now there are only 5000 doctors 
So each doctor has to treat four to five patients in real time every year. So there's a huge problem and people are dying. Now I will build a AI ML based solution that will minimize the doctor's time and help each doctor serve 20 people in the same time that he is serving two people. What is the advantage of this? Much better treatment. Now, this solution by itself may not be as complicated as whether the atom go this way or that way. You can solve it in eight months. But as a DBA candidate, you understood a business problem. You understood the economic or social impact of it. Mm -hmm. And you built an end-to-end -end solution. Right? So that is the difference between a DBA thesis and a uh, PhD thesis. In PhD thesis, the rigor and complexity is more important. In DBA, application and utility is more important. Okay. Now, the let me remember the second question. How will you choose a problem like that? Yes, yes, right. So for whole year, we will train you in various subjects. Each subject will have a, um, uh, a uh, project in it. We will encourage you to do some projects. So yes. after you go through two terms here in coursework and their two terms full-time as student, you will have understood the field well enough and through the projects, you will have identified many problems. Now we give you two options. One is, in fact, primary option is go out and find an internship. Mm -hmm. Now, once you find an internship, which we will help you. Yes. Whatever work you do there, we as a mentor will sit with you and convert it into a thesis work. We will identify a research topic in the project work that you are doing in the industry right okay so we as mentor will tell you this is what you will do then once you go and do the work there obviously you can't share that work with us because it's confidential to the company but at a high level every month we will actually run a review session with you and see at you know what you are doing how you convert it into a dba thesis Okay, so most of the students who do the DBA will end up getting an industry internship and the faculty member in our program will help you convert that industry internship into a thesis. Okay, so that is the second question. Let me see whether there are any Muhammad Atif. Uh, and also I'd like to know what are options available other than this university, SSBM. Is right. he the one? So I am, of course, I am representing Golden Gate University, Muhammad. Um, right. SSBM, I don't know much about it. I will uh, right. leave it to someone else. Rocky, you can answer SSBM. I don't know. I'm right. representing, I'm a faculty at Golden Gate. Right. So I can talk about that. Yeah. Alpaf, yes, uh, we do have a doctorate in executive doctorate of Bus uh, business administration from SSBM, which is Swiss School of Business and Management in Geneva. Uh, now, the only difference between the DBA that uh, Dr. Muthi is speaking of and that DBA is that that is a completely online DBA and it's a completely self-paced course, but of course, you will not have the opportunity to do an internship. We will love to help you out uh, with further details on it. And uh, my colleague has shared contact details of our academic counselors and uh, you can use that link to uh, reach out to any academic counselor. Or you can also go to the upgrad website. And also, since uh, Altaf has brought this question, and you know, from the point at which you left Dr. Muthi, what I really understood is how much handholding Golden Gate University and upgrad is really providing to the learner. And I think that handholding is so crucial because, firstly, there will be so many learners who are going to academia after a very long time. Yes. And to write a research is in itself a big challenge. And, uh, you know, you want to make the most out of it because this is a life-changing experience, so to say. And uh, you want to make sure you're finding the best problem and hand-holding is so crucial with respect to not just your thesis mentor, which, you know, you can also find, let's say, you know, in an online DBA, but the kind of hand-holding you are providing uh, to find an internship experience as well. Right. And this is a point I think all our audience should take away um, sure. because of the fact that Direction is crucial, uh, what I gathered, uh, Dr. Murthy. And, uh, you know, since you've been speaking a lot also about the internship experience, I would like you to throw some light on uh, the CPT regulations, because when the learner is doing the thesis, 
essentially we are getting a cbd right i'll i'll explain that yeah. so i prefer the word coaching to hand holding because okay. these you already yeah. have five years experience yeah. so we coach you so you know a good coach um for virat kohli doesn't actually hand hold him he just tells yeah. hey you know what yeah. this is your strength this is your weakness so that's what we'll do but we are with you yeah. now talking about cpt mm. one of the most beautiful aspects of design of this ggu program is we made cpt part of the curriculum yes. so the 18 credits that that the student learns the 28 credits that the student l l earns from the uh, for the thesis can all be the internship so what we encourage the students what we help them and the regulation for cpt is if you spend two full terms two terms full time job nothing wrong you can continue you'll get your 3 years opt but if you do three terms or one year full time cpt okay you will not be eligible for your opt so we ensure that you only do two terms or nine months of full time cpt i think dr murthy's in might be having an internet issue we will just wait for him to come back In the meanwhile, for those of you who are still with us, we still have a couple more minutes. And uh, should you have any questions, please share them on the Q&A box and we'd be happy to take them up. Additionally, I think Arushi, uh, my colleague, has also shared uh, some contact details via which you can get in touch with your academic counselors. And all of you who are in the you know, in the process of considering this program, uh, maybe for this year, for the next year, or you would just like some guidance around it, we would highly encourage you to get in touch with our counselors and we'll be happy to help you with further details on it. This also goes for people who may look be looking for other programs other than a DBA. And uh, we have a host of uh, universities who have partnered with us in uh, USA, in UK, in uh, Canada for bachelor's programs in Germany. And uh, we have many different courses, whether it comes to technology, you know, and we are talking about very niche courses like Masters of Artificial Intelligence, Masters of Data Analytics and Visualization. We also have MBA programs with STEM concentrations and non-STEM concentrations. So uh, any of you, if you have any interest of pursuing an education or a career abroad, we'd be very happy to help you. So please use the contact details to get in touch with us.
So some of you have been asking about the slides or the presentation that we've used with all the course details. Uh, once Dr. Murthy shares with, with us, we are definitely going to send it across to you. I would uh, suggest that you please drop in your email IDs so that we can have it in our records and we can personally send it across to you. And I think Dr. Murthy is back. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, Rakhi, I dropped off. Uh, can I can yes. join back if you? Yes, absolutely, Dr. Murthy. We mm. were waiting for you. Uh, I'm really sorry. I, I'm taking the call from air, airport and I think my data plan got over. So now I'm yeah. on hotspot. Sorry about that. Please, sure, did I miss sure. any questions? Yes, Dr. Murthy, uh, we have just a couple more questions from our learners and we can take it in the next five minutes. Uh, sure. One question from somebody is, is a DBA internationally recognized in all countries? And uh, yes, here, sir. you know, I would also like to elaborate that question further by asking, is a DBA recognized in India and uh, or is a PhD still considered to be, uh, let's say, more superior than a DBA or more credible, so to say? Yeah. Right. So the, again, the first question, because the vast which is the body to accredit any university in the West Coast has accredited this DBA. This DBA is recognized worldwide. Okay. Now, in India, um, most B schools like IAMs, ISBs, etc., can accept a DBA as a faculty, like a PhD. And they don't differentiate in the pay terms or anything when they're re recruiting a DBA or a PhD. Now, Karpu world anywhere doesn't care about whether it is a BA, DBA or a PhD or an MS. We look at the quality of the person they will hire. So that is recognized there. If you want to join a government university for some weird reason, you mm -hmm. come back and you want to join a JNU um, MBA school as a faculty member, Indian government still only wants a PhD from a faculty right. member. Right. Okay, but if that is your goal, don't do this program. This right. is not for you. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is if any US school, government mm -hmm. or private, will accept you as a faculty like a PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, any corporate will accept you at the same level as a PhD. So um, in India, all B schools like IAMs, ISBs accept you as a faculty. So sure. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Yes, I think that answers the question very clearly. And uh, what's important is understanding what is the goal that you have in mind. Dr. Muthi, one final question, and that is that how does a DBA add to your personal brand? And uh, any final thoughts that you would like to share uh, with all our aspirants here? Okay. So how does DBA add to your personal brand exactly the same way a PhD has added to you? Sure. Okay. Now... Uh, the primary difference, however, in the personal brand is, see, at the end of your DBA, if you do good work, you can actually get a patent or a publication. That adds a lot more to your personal brand. See, degree is one thing. So if I tell I have a PhD, it adds a doctor. But when I tell I have a PhD, but you know what? I built five products. I have three patents, I published 20 papers, and I consulted with Fortune 500 companies, uh, 50 to 75 consulting projects. Now, that adds, adds the extra zinc. So my, um, the DBA gives you the doctorate degree and the needed branding, but the kind of work that you do in your DBA and kind of jobs that you do pose that and amount of scholarliness and IP you build really add to your brand. So, but this gives you the opportunity to do a publication or a patent. Publication. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Dr. Murthy.
and uh, i would uh, really like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy busy schedule to be here with us and we have benefited immensely from your knowledge and this informative thank session you. and uh, thank you to all our audience as well for uh, being patient and uh, we hope that uh, with this discussion you have had most of your queries answered on uh, that note uh, we look forward to hosting you again and i would hand it over to dr murthy for his final thoughts oh no I, all the best this is a yes. very exciting program if you have the right experience and motivation to work hard for a year year and a half to build your career transform your career become a leader i think this is you should give a very serious thought all the best okay yeah. we look forward to receiving some good applications okay yes. and working with you guys thank you thank you thank you very much bye. everyone good evening thank you bye